Now, uh, during a meeting with sheriffs on Tuesday, uh, Trump had claimed that the murder rate in our country is the highest it's been in 47 years. Now, a lot of people picked up on this and was like, wait a minute. Is that true? The highest in 47 years? Oh, we might want to double check that. Maybe do some fact checks. Now, of course, when you actually check out the real numbers, you would find out that no, crime is actually not at the highest level it's been in 47 years. In fact, in fact it's actually at a, it's at a low. Now, Rick Santorum is, is going to go on uh, CNN and he's going to talk about that with Poppy Harlow. And she does a good job and uh, challenging him on this. And uh, basically what he's going to do is he's going to talk about this and offer up a very interesting defense of Donald Trump. Now, first, uh, we've got one clip. Let's take a, th a look at that first. As you know, the president said that the, the, the murder rate is the highest that it has been in more than four decades. Let's pull up the chart uh, and show everyone what we're talking about here. The U.S. murder rate is actually half of where it was four decades ago. What do you want to hear, Senator, from the president on this? Well, the president has campaign, campaigned on the fact that he was going to bring law and order back to the country. And you're right, the, the overall rate of murders has gone down. A lot of that is, frankly, demographic. The, the country is getting older, and, and, and part of that is, as I mentioned, demographic. But no, part of it is the fact that people like Rudy Giuliani and others uh, you know, put in programs of policing that were much more aggressive in community policing, and, and it's had a, a positive impact on crime. But you can't ignore the horrible violence that we're seeing in many of our major cities. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on there, buddy. So basically, Rick Santorum says, yeah, yeah, okay, I admit crime has gone down. Yeah, sure. But you know what? It's because of Rudy Giuliani and how people are old. There's more old people. Uh, old people obviously don't do crime. <laughs> so look, that's kind of ridiculous, right? Now look, um, we actually did have a huge surge in this country, a uh, surge of violence in this country, the 1970s 1980s you know why well one of the big reasons is lead lead in the water lead in the air lead in the gasoline now look you might be like lead what the fuck are you talking about lead stay with me here is a little bit of science right now uh it was found back in uh, the 1970s 1980s that uh, uh it was found by scientist claire patterson that lead tends to make people violent now, he found that there's this oldest lead everywhere. And he's like, oh my God, there's, le there's lead in the gasoline. It makes people violent. Lead in the water. People are breathing this stuff in. Crime rates have gone up. Holy crap. Maybe we need to go and regulate this stuff. And so that's what he did. He fought against the, uh, the, 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 the oil companies in order to take uh, lead out of gasoline. Uh, you know fought uh, the companies to get more environmental regulations to make sure lead doesn't end up in our water like what's happening now in Flint. Uh, so he actually did a lot of good work. And since then, we've started to see violence go down, less, less violence, less murders. Overall in America, there seems to be less crime and we're actually safer than we have been. Now there are exceptions, of course. And of course, everybody, every right winger wants to bring up, oh yeah, what about Chicago? What about Chicago? Okay, well, look, Chicago is a little bit of an island, okay? And in reality, yes, there is more violence there uh, because it's a bit of an, uh, an anomaly. Now, on Chicago, they actually still have a lower murder rate than back in the 1970s and 80s. So even then, there, crime and murders have gone down. It's this higher here than it is in, in, in Chicago than it is in the rest of the country. So, and even in 2016, after, you know, years of it going down, it did tick back up and there's a problem there. But even Rick Santorum has to admit, look, even with Chicago, man, murder's still down. <laughs> even if he's wrong on the case of the, of the decline, it's not uh, the, the kind of aggressive policing. All that's done is really put more people in jail. Well, that's not the solution. No, the solution is more community policing. And to be fair, he did mention community policing, but it's also that massive reduction in lead. Now, I want to go back uh, and, and go to the next clip where he actually does defend Donald Trump uh, in, in this very new and very interesting way. Take a look. Doesn't it do a disservice to the American people and actually the argument about how do you bring 
down in cities like Chicago to say something that is just absolutely not true to say that the murder rate in this country this is a quote is the highest it has been in 47 years yeah, it is not, not it is it is I, it is I, half look, of that <laughs> i i i'm not going to defend donald trump's recitation of the facts and a lot of things i think trump speaks more from emotional and how he's feeling about certain things than he does necessarily being bound by all the facts uh and, and you know we've had that sitting, sitting, I, is that a problem I, for I, a do, I do believe that's that's one of uh one of his uh, characteristics. Uh, it's not a strong one. It's not one that uh, that helps him in, in in the debate. But I think his point that we're seeing a lot of violence and we're seeing cities out of control. And you look at a city like Chicago and you see violence, you know, markedly up and murder rates up. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's what he's referring to. Okay, so <laughs> I love this. He's an emotional speaker. He just cares too much that, uh, well, I, he cares too much about what's going on to actually know what's really going on. He cares too much to be bound by facts. I mean facts, really. Who cares about facts? I love this. Absolutely love this because it's ridiculous. So basically his what he's saying is that our president is just is, he's so emotional that we should just give him the pass when he lies. Oh, but wait a minute. He's president. He doesn't get a pass. You can't just legislate on emotion. And by far, this is the biggest irony of this entire story. Because look, one of the claims that right-wingers always make about liberals is you are too emotional. You're not actually looking at real facts. No, you're way too emotional and you got to calm down. And if you calm down, you'll see it our way. We're actually right. Biggest irony, right? The president right now is doing just that. Basing things on, according to Rick Santorum at least, basing things on emotion and not actual facts. And it's amazing to see Rick, Rick Santorum actually def using that line to defend him for lying about the murder rates. When the facts are readily available, we have truly entered the twilight zone. So, and again, we, we have a super emotional snowflake president who has to be kept uh, for, away from information that might upset him. You know what we also call that? We call that a safe space. Super snowflake, thin-skinned president who's so emotional that you've got to keep him separated. And the irony about this is that the same people who always complain about the snowflake liberals and safe spaces, they absolutely love Donald Trump. <laughs> the irony, man, it fucking burns. Hey, everybody, thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more like this, please hit the subscribe button below. And if you want to support truly independent progressive media, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash TYTNation.